SEC scheduling model that's been riding on the coattails of Georgia and Alabama is holding college football back. And we need to have an honest assessment of where these teams really stand because the jig is up through two weeks of college football. The jig is up. And when we go back to last season where the SEC had a losing record against power five teams in the non-conference, why are we still playing eight conference games instead of nine and acting like, oh, it's the gauntlet that's the SEC when Alabama and Georgia have been propping the conference up? There's a big difference between playing eight conference games and nine conference games when three of those are non-competitive games as opposed to playing another conference game or another power four opponent now if you're going to take that extra free win that comes with scheduling a november cupcake while everybody else in the country is playing conference opponents then you don't get to hide behind your two best teams and call yourself the best conference because we keep winning right now it's alabama and georgia now the reputation that the sec rightfully earned for a long time it was there, but what's been happening on the field and now with the super conferences, with the Big Ten looking as good as it is, the Big 12 is improved. How can you say this? And then when the ACC has been kicking your butt for the last couple years too, mm, there's something to talk about because that SEC reputation, it might work on people who need it to be true for their own personal agenda or networks that want it to be true or people that refuse to think critically because these first two weeks of college football and last year are giving us all the evidence that we need to show that the Southeastern Conference isn't this untouchable juggernaut that it's portrayed to be. How did one of the most storied SEC schools, LSU, do against a USC team that had given up an average of 38 points to its last 15 power five opponents oh they held lsu to half of that and they won okay you know how about florida at home in the swamp against miami oh them same hurricanes had their largest margin of victory over florida since 1983 but hey you know stuff happens they may not be as good this year oh Let's check in on Mississippi State, who led a former FCS running back on the team that was picked to finish last, last in the Big 12, get almost 300 yards rushing in one game where the Bulldogs were down 30 to three at one point. Hmm. <laughs> and it was Arizona State's first win over an SEC opponent. And what about Texas A&M? Because they got that good old impressive blue chip rating and all that oil money. Oh, they lost to a team that turned around and lost the very next week to Northern Illinois. And they took that loss, not in Notre Dame Stadium. They took it in College Station, which was the toughest place to play in all of college football. <laughs> I thought the SEC home environments were supposed to mean something. Mm, clearly not right now. Well, another place that they didn't mean anything is in auburn maybe auburn was going to redeem the conference because they were a two score favorite at home against the cal team that hasn't had a winning record in its own conference since 2008 nope they got punched in the mouth at home by a team that struggled to put away uc davis but you know hey at least arkansas got out to a big lead against oklahoma state but what happened after that though L. <laughs> well, at least they got Oklahoma's 16 to 12 victory over Houston to be proud of. Maybe that's it. But George, because I can hear the SEC honks through my screen right now. What about Georgia dominating Clemson? What about Texas going up to Ann Arbor in the big house and beating Michigan? What about Tennessee and Vanderbilt cracking their SEC opponent skulls? Sure, that actually happened. But according to you, though, that's how the conference should be treating everybody but it isn't you have fallen for the trick that your top teams shape the identity of your entire conference and you've tried to protect yourself by refusing to test whether your top teams can handle nine conference opponents because over time that results in an inflated sense of self that was not earned because if you're the best from top to bottom like you say why hesitate to prove it and more importantly, why doesn't it show up when your former national champions take on Pac-12 cast off? Why not? Let's look at the math on this for people who love the analytics. 
through the SEC with only playing eight conference games. That's an average of four losses that has to be spread across the entire conference. Now, obviously, some teams are going to lose no games. Some teams are going to lose more. So that's an average of four losses. Now, in conferences where they play nine games, that is an average of four and a half losses that has to get spread across. So the SEC in against the Big Ten is going to have a nine loss advantage. So that means... That between Oregon, Penn State, Ohio State, Nebraska, and the rest of the conference, there are nine more losses that have to be spread around. So when the TV will tell you and the, and the people, the analysts, oh, the Big Ten, the ACC, the Big 12, they played their way out of it because their team's lost. It is a math equation. And the SEC Conference Commissioner Greg Sankey knows it. That's why they don't want to change it. That's why if you got the best teams, why would you not play more competitive non-conference games? Well, there's the one you need more. And SEC fans need to accept that they are living in the shadow of the Alabamas and Georgias of the world. And then acting like that success just magically trickled down to them as well. That's like Tito trying to claim the success of Michael Jackson. Yeah, you were there, you shared the last name, but Michael is Michael. Alabama is Alabama, Georgia is Georgia, and the SEC lining up those two teams against Mercer, UMass in mid-November is absolutely embarrassing, especially when they should be playing a conference game against like a Kentucky or a South Carolina. But instead, actually, you know what? They can't because those two teams are busy playing Murray State and Wofford. How are you not embarrassed by this? Oh, because we're winning championships. Listen, this is supposed to be about the fans. These teams typically criticize their student sections and their fans. Why are you guys leaving early? What do you mean? Because you put up a non-competitive game. Why am I going to spend my time, energy, and effort when I can watch the first half on TV and go back to partying and not waste a bunch of money? How are you not embarrassed by West Coast teams like Cal, USC, and Arizona State making your mid-tier teams look like junk, even when they're big names like LSU. Maybe that's the key to the SEC homers. Maybe that's it. Shameless short-term memory and the thought that being in the same room as Alabama or Georgia somehow makes you relevant while you bully DeVry University right before Thanksgiving to make sure that you get bowl eligibility or you slide up in the rankings. If that's the life you want, keep on doing what you're doing. But college football is being ruined because of it.